another episode of a day in the life of an agency owner. Now this one's going to be a bit of a different one. It's not a. It's going to be. It's still going to be a very realistic one, but we're in a bit of a different location. We've got some incredible views, although it's a bit misty in this uh, in this early morning. It's around 7 a.m. and we're starting our day here. So what we've done is we've gone to the coast of Barcelona, uh, Costa Brava. It's an, it's an amazing place if you guys want to check it out. Uh, but essentially, the reason why we've done that is because uh, we wanted to get away from the noise, the business of the city, the chaos, the pollution, and really just breathe fresh air. Um, get a bit of a, 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 an early summer vibe. Most importantly, we wanted to prep the, uh, the launch of the Eco Brand that uh, launching. No distractions, just working on that, doing a bit of sport, eating well, and all in all, just having fun while building the bullshit. So that is a bit about uh, what we're doing uh, here in a bit of a different location. A few things that we've got lined up for today. We're going on a, a little hike to start our day. Uh, then we're going to have breakfast. Then I've got some team calls. Then I've got a few sales calls, onboarding calls. I'm also going to show you behind the scenes of us building the Econ brand and a bunch of other cool stuff. So without further ado, let's cut into it. All right, so we're almost done with the hike. An incredible, incredible view. We've got some sea on one side. And a really uh, cool neighborhood on the, <laughs> on the other one. Uh, but yeah, honestly, doing this hikes and, and uh, moving in the morning, it's so, so important to, you know, at least for me to have a, to have a productive day, um, getting some sun and vitamin D. So yeah, we're going to go finish the hike, then we're going to have breakfast and we're going to get straight into work. Uh, young Dougie. Hey, Dougie. Hey. The dog is out. We're back home. Oof. So this is what we've got for a uh, brekkie, if you guys are interested. We've got some OJ, nice. We've got some Avo, scrambled eggs, a bit of uh, bread, rye bread. Ooh, what is this? A, uh, a note, oats, crep, and uh, a bit of yogurt as well. How was the, the walk? Very nice. What was your favorite part? Oh, no. The breakfast. See, see, see. All right, so uh, we're gonna oh, dig into it. Oh, Dougie. Yeah. Is it good? I'm gonna go ahead. You have the videos, right? You've seen the videos. For okay, so those are the video ads. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and add the um, the copy. I'll, I'll, I'll literally leave all the, the the full breakdown of, of the, the strategy. So yeah, his pixel. So he his personal page doesn't have a pixel. So we're gonna okay. use the same pixel as the website because essentially it's gonna be the same audiences. Because he never had a website. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. I mean, he had the website from his clinic. That'd be cool if we could access that pixel. Actually, I, I, I'm going to try to get the pixel data from the, the clinic, because then we can just retarget those people as well. So now that the call with the lead media buyer is done, I'm going to go ahead and get straight uh, to work with uh, agency related tasks, right? So it's gonna be an hour, an hour and a half of uh, basically implementing the tracking uh, codes that we spoke about. Basically running a bit of copy, which I don't have to do, but I really just love doing so we can launch those ads early in the morning. So then I'm also gonna reply to some of my mentees posts. And before lunch, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the Harvest, the uh, kitchen garden. I'm not sure what the actual name is. And we're gonna scout a few things for lunch and also take a few picks for the Econ brand. That type of lifestyle is just something that we truly believe in and that's really on brands. And so we're gonna take a few picks there and I'll see you guys in that clip. So getting a, a little bit of a workout in lunch. Um, one of the things that, that I've come to realize, especially in the past few months is, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? But health is a priority and it might not seem like it when you're, when you have so much stuff to do, when you are laser focused on, 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 on you know, the task at hand and you go into your business, but these, these are things, you know, working out, getting the pump in or, or you know, going for a job, whatever it is, right? they act as multipliers. So yes, technically you're spending time doing them, but they're gonna add so much to your life. So yes, you're spending time, but it's more of an investment. So I like to get a workout in every single day. And I also like to remind you that uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash the like button. And with that being said, uh, let's cut into the next clip. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna go to the kitchen garden and we're gonna scout out some of the uh, veggies, some of the stuff that we could uh, include into our into our lunch. Uh, so. <laughs> That's what um the squad. This is the kitchen garden squad. We've got the young Dougie. We've got Augusta. <laughs> this is what it's uh, looking like, and uh, the chef is not going to be happy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've got some 
letters, right? What else we got? You asking me? Yes, sir. Some garlic. Oh, garlic. Yeah. And some. I don't know. I don't even. I don't even know, guys. Oh, I've got yeah. some spices on the side. It's pretty cool. All this stuff. And uh, a goal of mine, for sure, is maybe in the near future, five, ten years, maybe earlier than that, uh, is to have a uh, kitchen garden where we can, you know, maybe 90% of our food we can just literally get from a garden and from garden to plate. Uh, and so all this stuff that you guys see here, uh, no pesticides, no nothing, right? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. All the, what did you say? Spices. Spices? Oh yes. Yes, yes. Show us a bit of the spice. Uh, a few uh, the spices. Hello. So we've got. I don't know the name in in in, uh, in English, but some mint, some. Uh, guys, my spice vocab. Albaca. Oh, Bahaka. Oh, this is pesto, right? Yeah, like no, pesto. This is oregano. 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 Okay, this is what you use for yeah. pesto. This is albaca. There you go. But it's a bit... Um, it's a bit small. Yeah, this year it's not quite good. Alright. And... Um, yes. <laughs> hey. Jenny. Hey. Hello. So the byproduct of the harvest is right there. Um, we've got a bit of what, what do we have here? <laughs> I Some don't know the calamari. name. Calamari. 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 I'm not. It's not fried. It's a. No. I don't know. It's healthier, but we got some calamari. We got a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> a really nice day over here. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead dig in, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get straight back into the work. Into work. Um, because I've got a call in. in 17 minutes but uh it should be good so let's go ahead and enjoy this very quality food honestly one of the things that i miss the most in spain I, I i do have a chef that preps all the meals for me but there's something about i don't know harvesting your food there's something about uh growing the food or, or just having really just natural food again i have really quality food in madrid but you know when you have prep food there's something that you know there's something that, that you lack right and so i'm very excited for this uh, i'm definitely gonna miss this part of uh of our little getaway so um i'll see you guys in the next clip all right so that is lunch done now what i usually do after lunch uh, in the afternoons is i like to essentially i like to batch work right so the heavier more deep focus work will be done in the morning and then uh in the afternoon i'll primarily do the the video calls the actual talking right the the interactive social stuff and so now i've got a sales call which maybe i'll show you guys a, a clip of that and i've also got two mentee on board so you know, you guys know that for me, it's all about having that personalized, tailored interaction with my mentees. So I like to keep it very tight knit. And that is why I personally do the onboardings because not only do I vet my mentees before they jump on, but I also make sure that they all set up and uh, we're on the right trajectory and it's a personalized, tailored attention. So I'm going to get straight into that and I'll see you guys then. I'm not really talking for my mentorship, you, you already know this. So I know the students are talking and, and one of the things that they, they, they say is like, Jaime, you should be charging tens of thousands of dollars for the product base alone, because it's literally the, the, the byproduct of you putting your head down for three, four years, right? Battle tested these concepts with the market base, with your prospects, with clients, right? And 100%, uh, look, I, I think there's like this, this toxic culture when it comes to work, especially in the agency space, where like, if you're not putting in six to eight hours of, of of work in, in your outreach or sending out hundreds of cold emails like you're not doing you're not doing enough right and i say honestly uh, in most of my students uh, do that with less email sent with less cold outreach with no cold calls right and the way we do that is by being smart right by being effective we have a new system offer we have a clear sales fund right we automate things and that's why i show you in the mentorship deal how to eliminate things that most agencies are only spending six eight hours doing right wasting time you know, cold calls, cold emails, right? How to delegate by building an incredible A team. So you feel like a CEO founder, so you're not spinning your wheels, right? You're not operating like a, a headless freelancer, right? A headless chicken, right? A run and run, uh, doing everything yourself, right? So what we're doing now is we're working on the e-com brand. Now, if you're not new to my channel, you may have seen the series that I've got building a $100 million e-com brand. And 
Again, one of the things that I preach a lot about in this channel is the fact that once you build this incredible, incredible e-com incubator and e-com marketing team, you can build any brand of your own and later down in the journey, right? Because you've got an incredible, incredible asset. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. We're um, in the final stages um, of making sure that this product is, is the best it can be. A lot of hours are being put into the creation of, of the actual uh, product. Um, the design uh, is, is one of the things that we're working on uh, the most right now. Uh, so making sure that the design is just perfect, we're sending that over to our incredible, incredible manufacturer in, in uh, Barcelona. And that's one of the reasons why, as I mentioned in, in, at the start of the vlog, one of the reasons why we came here is, number one, uh, because it's an incredible place to focus. And can you shut the f- <laughs> uh, <laughs> So cute. Uh, but um, that's not how I treat the dog, by the way. I'm much more careful. <laughs> no, I'm much more lovely with it. But yeah. Um, uh, my, my point was, one of the reasons why we came here is because um, it's an incredible place to focus and to get a lot of work done, especially uh, in the city, Madrid, uh, with the warm weather and all this stuff. It, it's just a bit um, a bit tougher uh, to, to focus on, so we came here. Sometimes you get really nice weather or you get, you know, this mist uh, like we're getting now, and so it's great to focus, but also because we've got Barcelona uh, one hour away from, from here. Um, in fact, uh, probably tomorrow we'll go uh, have dinner there uh, for, um, for a friend's birthday. So. Um, yeah, the, the, essentially what we're working on right now, in my hand I'm holding, hopefully you guys cannot see it, but in my hand I'm holding a uh, prototype of the product. I don't want to reveal what this will be just yet, it will be revealed in episode 2 of the uh, building a uh, $100 million e-com brand. So we're approving the, uh, the final designs, um, sending that over to the team over there in Barcelona uh, so we can start the uh, production of the FOSS batch, uh, which I'm extremely excited for. So. We're gonna crank out a, a bit more work on the Decom brand and um, I'll catch you guys in the next clip. This is the product, but my editor has blurred it out. So I can tease you guys with it. Hopefully he's got a good editing skills because it's blurred out, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to share that with you guys. So now I've got my round of one-to-one with my mentees. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm not a big fan of pre-recorded courses and that's why you won't see a, a course of mine on, on a landing page for you to buy. I keep it very tight-knit and I keep it, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that I have that one-to-one -one tailored personalized attention with my mentees. This is one of the things that I look forward to the most uh, during the week. I just love catching up with my mentees, uh, seeing how they're doing, seeing how they're implementing, executing, getting results um, with the, the uh, mentorship. And so I'm very excited to, uh, to get straight into this. I'll probably leave a, a clip of uh, one of the calls uh, in here for you guys to, uh, to watch and maybe get a bit of a, a value. And so without further ado, let's, uh, let's go right into it. Yes, loud and clear. Okay, I uh, just want to say, yeah, this mentorship has been great so far. I just had a few like questions going into it. Um, hmm. I don't know, like I'm pretty early on. So I'm basically, I've got to the part where I have to decide which like service I want to offer. And based on the niche I've chosen, like I decided to go with apparel and fashion brands. And I just want to know in like your expert opinion, what you would say is better to go with like email marketing, direct marketing, or would you say the paid ads route? And like, what would you say in the current landscape is the best option to go with? For apparel and fashion? Yeah. I, I would say, I mean, there's this not like both, you know? Um, I think, what, what, what do you think comes to you easier? Because you haven't had experience with, with either of, the, of them, right? I've done paid ads in the past, but, and I know like there was some questions that like um, some vetting questions that you, like you post in the document to say, okay, which f fits your persona better. But yeah. right now I just want to know if there's like a better option or something that's. No, I, I think paid ads is, is just very strong. Like one of the things you want to keep in mind, Vec, is that we, it, it's not, you know, paid ads shouldn't be the thing that worries you, like whether, you know, regarding like, is it too saturated or not? Like, honestly, if you're already in a very specific sub niche, like you're going to draft your categories, you'll see the offers, the sales funnels, like they're, they're just very different tools out there. So I would, I wouldn't worry too much about, about that and, and potentially even, uh, uh, essentially harm you because, you know, you already have that paid ads experience. So I wouldn't give it too much thought. I think paid ads, it, it would, would then be the, the best option for you. Um, and I recommend you check out, I actually did uh, the interview with Mike, the last one, on my YouTube channel. He, uh, so he's actually working at, a, at an apparel brand. And I even say like, you know, for, 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 for those of my mentees, right, uh, who, who are in the apparel and fashion space, right, uh, what are some things that you guys 
I think really works um, when it comes to their advertising. So definitely check that out. Um, I think I believe he's at the start of the, the interview, but I, I would say Pirates in, in your case, right? Email marketing is still an amazing, amazing service. Okay, okay, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Um, thanks for answering that. And um, when it comes to Facebook and Google Ads versus the newer platforms, like I was considering doing something because um, when it comes to clothing and apparel, like it's um, something trendy. Yep. And yep. it's not, like if you go into certain categories, like if you want to go into designer brands or streetwear, it'd be more trendy. So in terms of like finding, I mean, going into like Snapchat ads or TikTok ads, what would you say, like, what, what advice would you give if I chose to go down that route instead of Facebook ads and Google ads route? I, I mean, the advice is like not much advice is, I think, I think it is also a solid idea. Um, especially because as, as you said, if there, if there are any sub niches that are, are well suited for apparel and fashion is probably the, the newer platforms as well. Right. So TikTok, Snapchat ads, I think, I think those are, are definitely less tapped um, as well. Um, so I, th I think it's a good idea. Like if, if you want, you can go ahead and maybe take a, a week or two to see, it, you know, to go through the hiring process and really see if, if there's, there's, there's someone in the TikTok ad space that you really connect with. And if you find the right person, I think you can really crush it. Okay. Okay. So maybe give it, you know, the, the one to two weeks to, to, uh, to try that. Maybe it doesn't really work. Maybe you don't find the, the right person. Uh, and then you go, okay, let me just switch to paid ads with uh, the traditional platforms, which still work tremendously well. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, that's all I really have for now. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. Awesome, man. Um, you too. Bye-bye. That's one of the reasons why you don't run the ads yourself. The, the way you think, want to think about business, and, and it's definitely something that apps struggle with as well, right? Um, but it's a trap. Okay? The trap is thinking you save money. Sure, the, sh the, 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 the short-term consequences is you save money. Now, the long-term consequences is you don't save money because now you cannot get your clients' results, okay? So you cannot keep them around for longer. Now you are spending that time on, on, on time that instead of delivering the service, which doesn't generate, uh, generate any revenue, um, which it could actually, if you have a really good media buyer who gets you killer results because then the ad profit deal would show for that, right? But anyways... Um, you, you, you cannot put that time into sales outreach, right? You cannot put that time into building better systems, into um, scaling the business, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the trap is there are certain things that you think uh, you're saving on, okay? And in many cases, that will be very valid. Like, oh, let me just cut this expense. Like it's, it's not, it doesn't generate, right? But having a really good team member is going to generate you a lot of money. You're going to keep your, your clients for a lot longer. You're going to have more time to spend on, um, on, on sales outreach, things that move you forward. You're also going to have, you're also going to make more money on the ad profit deals, right? So when someone, when, 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 um, when you guys uh, signed, um, when you guys signed fixed plus ad profit deals, like that ad profit deal is going to be, it's going to be fat if you get really good results, right? Uh, and then the final thing is like mental health and, and, and mental peace, right? So you're going to be able to have more mental peace because you're not running around working 20 hours a day, right? Because you have to do a hundred different things, right? Which also gives you more longevity because now you can work 12 hours a day, 10 hours a day, right? But for much longer, makes sense? So the main thing is, and I, I, definitely, I, I still fall into this trap, like um, this month, well, uh, last month of May, I literally doubled my business. So 140K per month now, uh, my agency pulling in, right? Which is honestly crazy for me. Um, to think, even think about how do I do that? One of the big changes that I made in May is I gave up more control, right, of my business. So I trusted on more people, right? I brought on more people to help me with sales, to, to do all that. And at first I was like, ah, but, you know, like, uh, you know, I could do the sales myself, but, you know, that, that, that could save money. But then again, I wouldn't have been able to close as many clients. I wouldn't have been able to grow as fast, makes sense? So you want to think about the short-term consequences. Um, and that, that's, that's a short answer I had, like, to, you know, um, I talk a lot uh, when it comes to these questions, to, to these answers, but uh, that's that's the short answer. Um, the the long answer I will talk more about, like in life, you want to look at always the long term consequences of things, right? Um, uh, you know, the first order, second order, third order consequence. When you buy a TV, like sure you spend, okay, right on that TV, but that TV is going to cost you probably 
it could cost you millions, right? In in second, third order consequences because you, now you have to watch the TV. Now you have you're distracted. You're you know this shit, right? So so you gotta think about the long term consequences of of decisions you make in the short term. So that is a long run of calls wrapped up with uh, my mentees. Water is definitely uh, is definitely absolutely key uh, in uh, during this run of uh, of one to ones, um, but. As always, it was a very, very interesting uh, conversations, And I also love it because it keeps me on my toes with my agency uh, game and knowledge. So that is that for this portion of the day. And now onto the next clip. That is the sound of a bathtub being filled. We've got some candles going on. A bit of uh, water in here. And uh, yeah, August and I are going to just in, so we're probably going to be in there for around 30 minutes, uh, really wind down from a hectic, busy, productive, uh, so cool day, and so I'll speak to you guys in the next week. So at this point it's become a, a tradition in the vlogs to show you guys what we're having, but the chef really went hard with the dinner, so we have we have a chopsticks, lamb chopsticks, uh, we've got this mushroom I don't know what it is, but it smells amazing. <clears throat> We've got some puree. She's not liking it. <laughs> she really wants a little bit, but look at that. So this has become a tradition at this point. Um, after dinner, Kama Maltese, we've got a little addition with some after eights right there, but Kama Malti, a little nice candle. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and sip on this, really wind down and uh, pass out. So that is the end of this vlog. Another day in the life of an agency owner and hopefully with this vlog, my goal with this is for you guys to see that, look, some things are, are really cool. You know, the fact that you can work from anywhere, you can have the time, location, financial freedom, right? But some things are, are not flashy and I actually love the, the non-flashy, the deep work uh, type of stuff, right? Um, because at the end of the day, we're building a real business here, right? And we're not um, just influencers or, or whatever it is, right? So I really hope you guys are enjoying these vlogs. If you are, drop a massive thumbs up. And also, I realize that 50% of you watching this right now are not subbed. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. And as always, hope everything is going well in your journey. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.